let's get on with a new uh, music video. And uh, this continues my obsession with rankings. I'm in 1971 and I'm looking at the top 20 songs as I saw it. Songs, singles. And I restricted my selections mainly to the UK. Uh, some of the American uh, singles of that year uh, that didn't get released in the UK, I haven't included. Okay, so let's get started. Um, we're going to get started with uh, number 20, Strange, Strange Kind of Woman by the rock band, British rock band Deep Purple, originally released as a follow-up to Black Knight in early 71. It got to an eight in the UK charts, but uh, got to one in Denmark. Okay, now uh, it was released later uh, on the album Fireball, but not on the original. Right, the song was originally called Prostitute, and vocalist Ian Gillen introduced the song on Deep Purple in concert. It's about a friend of ours who got mixed up with a very evil woman, said Gillen. And it was a sad story. They got married in the end. And a few days after they got married, the lady died. And uh, another version that Gillen put forward uh, of the song's history, uh, I loved her in a strange post-adolescent pre-adult way. But those so... <coughs> then so did quite a lot of other people. She loved them too and gave them a good return for their money. I failed misery when I tried to break her from the habit. She said it wasn't a habit, it was her life. And what did I know anyway? I did get promoted from Wednesday mornings to Saturday evenings, sort of. But the fact is that this song is not about one woman, but a compilation of frills and disappointments. And such a package can only be called Nancy. I grew up fast. The innocent dead died uh, in the category my woman all claims were relinquished. Uh, <coughs> let's have a quick reminder then of the personnel. Ian Gillen on vocals, Richie Blackmore guitar, Ro Roger Glover on bass, John Lord keyboards and Ian Pace on drums. And I'm going to read a little bit of the lyric. There once was a woman, a strange kind of woman, the kind that gets written down in history. Her name was Nancy. Her face was nothing fancy. She left a trail of happiness and misery. I loved her. Everybody loved her. She loved everyone and gave them good return. I tried to take her. I even tried to break her. She said, I ain't for taking. Won't you ever learn? I want you. I need you. I got her. Be seeing you. And the lyric will be on a slide, all of it, so you can continue. And then, Backstreet Love, uh, a song by British rock band Curved Air, a band I saw uh, on a number of occasions back in the early 70s. Written by band members Ian Eyre, Sonia Christina, I remember her, and Daryl Way. It's included on their second album and was released in July 71 as a single by Warner Brothers. Very successful, got to four in the UK's charts, and the critic Dave Thompson called Backstreet Love one of the band's own finest moments and one of the crucial singles of the early 70s. And uh, Sonia Christina on vocals, Francis Monkman on EMS VCS3, piano, guitar and Hammond organ, Ian Air bass and Florian Pilkington mixer on drums. Daryl Hall, though, uh, though the chief writer of the song, did not play on the recording. Uh, and I'm going to just have a little uh, glance, a little glance at the lyric. Uh, and there will be a sly, of course. Thank you. Summer's coming. Time to dream the day away. And she's so sunny is the girl you met today. Will she make it? Can she take it? I do try love. Such a shy love. Racket Backstreet leaning on the wall. She reads the story of her life before it all. Did she give love? Could she feel love? Did she find love? Was it real love? Where's your smile today? Did she let you try? Try to see she didn't mean to make you feel so sad. And the rest of the uh, lyric uh, detail will be on that slide. In many ways, it's got a similar topic to a uh, strange kind of woman. What do you think? Changes, David Bowie. Now, I did do a very extensive uh, dive into this song on my album tracks, but it was also released as a single uh, off the Hunky Dory album, of course, 
and uh, it's uh, co-produced by Bowie and Ken Scott, featuring Straws member Rick Wakeman on piano, and the Spiders from Mars, guitarist Mike, Mick Ronson, bassist Trevor Boulder and drummer Mick uh, Woodmanson. Uh, the, also marked the first time that Bowie played the sax on one of his recordings, which I think is, uh, is significant in how one views this song of excellence. Uh, he had experimented with numerous musical styles, but uh, in an attempt to earn his stardom, and the lyrics of changes reflect this with the first verse uh, focusing on the compulsive native of artistic reinvention and distancing oneself from the rock stream. And uh, as a way of sort of trimming the detail that was in the last uh, uh, video on uh, album tracks, I'm actually going to uh, uh, have a quick uh, dive into the lyric. Uh, and uh, here we are, that first bit. Oh yeah, still don't know what I was waiting for. And my time was running wild. A million dead end streets. And every time I thought I've got, I'd got it made, it seemed the taste was not so sweet. So I turned myself to face me, but I've never caught a glimpse of how the others must see the faker. I'm much too fast to take that test. Chorus, the ch 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 changes, turn and face the strange, ch 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 changes, don't want to be a richer man, ch 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 changes, turn and face the strange, ch 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 changes, just going to have to be a different man, Tame, time may change me, but I can't trace time, sums it up, doesn't it? Okay, 18 changes, David Bowie. So to 17, Get It On by T-Rex, previously uh, known as Tyrannosaurus Rex, English rock band now, in 71. And it was featured on Electric Warrior the same year, written by Mark Boland, of course. Second chart topper for T-Rex uh, in the UK singles tar charts. Retitled in the US to Bang A Gone Get It On because of confusion with a song of the same name by the group uh, Chase. Uh, Boland claimed to have written the song out of his desire to record Little uh, Queenie, Chuck Berry's song, and said that the riff was taken from the Berry 2. Uh, it's a slightly edited line from Qu Little Queenie, uh, and it's said at the fade of Get It On. Uh, produced by Tony Visconti, uh, the line, uh, and the song was virtually, it virtually ended the once solid friendship between Mark Boland and the DJ John Peel. I'm an ad, a, a admirer of Peel, and he certainly influenced me considerably. Uh, Peel was less than enthusiastic for this song, and uh, uh, he, he, he didn't really want anything more to do with them. Uh, felt that they had copped out, really. Uh, saxophones... <coughs> Uh, were played by uh, Ian McDonald from King Crimson. And uh, King uh, Rick Waitman appeared, uh, as he'd done on uh, Changes, to play uh, the piano. Uh, and uh, he got a measly £9 for his efforts, apparently. Uh, and the band then, Rick, Mark Boland on lead vocals and guitar, Rick Maitman, piano and organ, Ian McDonald, baritone and alto sax, Steve Curry, bass, Bill Legend on drums and tambourine, and some backing vocals from the American duo, Mark Volman and Howard Kaling, very in, involved with Frank Zappa at the time. So it's a really boppy, poppy sound, quite uh, uh, addictive, and I love it. Okay, 16 then, Ain't No Sunshine, song by Bill Withers from his 1971 album, Just As I Am, produced by Booker T. Jones. The record featured musician Donald Duck Dunn on bass, Al Jackson Jr. on drums, and Stephen Stills on guitar. The string arrangements were done by Booker T. Jones, recorded in L.A. and released as a single. It was a breakthrough hit for Withers, reaching number six on the U.S. Uh, charts. And uh, he was inspired to write the song after watching the 62 movie Days of Wine and Ro Roses in reference to the characters played by Lee Remick and Jack Lemon. Uh, he said, They were both al alcoholics who were alternatively weak and strong. It's like going back for seconds on rat poison. 
Sometimes you miss things that weren't particularly good for you. It's just something that crossed my mind from watching that movie and probably something else that happened in my life that I'm not aware of. He intended to write the lyrics uh, in, in repeating the phrase I know 26 times, but following the advice of other musicians, he dropped that. Uh, and at the time he was working at a factory making bar bathrooms, would you believe? The song went gold and the uh, record company presented with his, uh, with his reward a golden toilet seat and it marked the start of his career. Uh, absolutely brilliant song. I remember seeing it on the old grey whistle test at the time. It won the Grammy for the best R&B song uh, the following year. And uh, I'm going to read uh, a little bit of the lyric uh, so you can get a taste of it. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. It's not warm when she's away. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone and she's always gone too long. Anytime she goes away. Wonder this time where she's gone. Wonder if she's going to stay. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. And this house just ain't no house anytime she goes away. Verse 3. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone, only darkness every day. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone, and this house just ain't no home any time she goes away. Any time she goes away. Fairly simple lyrics, but I thought I'd uh, give you a taste. Will be a slide, of course, as always. 15 is You've Got a Friend. Uh, written by American singer-songwriter Carol King, and it was referred to recorded by King and included on her second album, Tapestry. And then uh, what uh, the James Taylor version came along on his album, Mudslide Slim and The Blue Horizon. They're both great, but I give Taylor the edge and it was released in 1971, released, reaching number one on the Billboard chart and four on the UK chart. It also won Grammy Awards uh, for Taylor uh, and, uh, and for... Uh, best Male pop Vocal Performance, and also for King for Song of the Year. And King stated that the song was as close to pure inspiration as I've ever experienced. And the, the song really wrote itself, she said. It was, uh, according to Taylor, King told him that the song was a response to a, a line in Taylor's earlier song, Fire and Rain, that was on uh, Sweet Baby James. I've, uh, and that uh, line is, I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. Uh, King's album was recorded in an overlap with Taylor's uh, and King, Donny Korchmore and Joni Mitchell prefer, performed on both versions. And the song is included on both albums. Uh, it's an affirmative song, said one critic, and suggested Taylor's version was too similar. I love it anyway. And here's uh, an example of the lyric. When you're down and troubled and you need a helping hand and nothing, well, nothing is going right. Close your eyes and think of me and soon I will be there to brighten up even the darkest nights. You just call out my name and you know wherever I am, I come running. Oh yeah, baby, up to see you again. Winter, spring, summer or fall. All you've got to do is call. And I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, uh, you've got a friend. If the sky above you should turn dark and full of clouds and that old north wind should begin to blow, keep your head together and call my name out loud now. Soon I'll be knocking upon your door. You just call out my name and you know wherever I am, I'll come running. Oh, yes, I will, to see you again. There's more to the lyric, but... The videos get too long, so I'll cut it short there. But you can see all of the lyric on the slide. We're going from 20 to 11, and then I'll do a second video with the top 10. <coughs> We're up to number 14 now. I'm Still Waiting, written and produced by Deep Edwards and recorded by Diana Ross. And it appeared on her 1970 album, Everything Is Everything. The song reached number one in the UK uh, in August. And also in Ireland, I'm Still Waiting continued the vein of sophisticated soul as heard on Ross's breakthrough solo, It Ain't No Mountain High. However, it was only a modest success in the US. US. Uh, and although it was initially intended uh, very much 
uh, as uh, an album track. Uh, BBC's Radio 1 disc jockey Tony Blackburn featured it heavily on his morning uh, programme and EOI then persuaded uh, Tamla Motown uh, to release it as a single in the UK, which it did. And I love her voice on this. It's an absolute dream, uh, an absolute huge talented uh, American, black American singer, firstly with the Supremes and continue it going solo. So there we have it. I'm still waiting. Diana Ross, superb. It's a song called Black and White uh, and uh, it was by uh, Greyhound uh, and it was a reggae song. However, it was written in 1954 by David Arkin and Earl Robinson and first recorded by Pete Seeger. Uh, and it featured an American, African-American child in 1956. The song was inspired by the United States Supreme Court decision of Brown versus Board of Ed Education, which outlawed racial segregation of the public schools. And uh, uh, I... I didn't know all this until I looked up uh, on Wikipedia and the original lyrics of the song are referred here in and they were referred in the court their robes were black their heads were white the schoolhouse doors were closed so tight and nine judges all sat down set down their names to end the years and years of shame the version by Greyhound <coughs> uh, doesn't include all this this verse but I wanted to make it out I absolutely love this uh, reggae version. And uh, another version was uh, done by Three Dog Night, but I don't uh, uh, know too much about that either. But anyway, Black and White, Greyhound, UK release, Touch the Reggae. Love it. Up to number 12 now, two more to go. It's Too Late, written by, uh, sorry, it's a song by Carol King, the American singer-songwriter, who's also on Tapestry. However, Tony Stern wrote the lyric and King the Music, released as a single in April 1971. The single, the lyrics describe the blameless end of a loving relationship. Uh, music critic Dave Mars saw implicit feminism in the lyric because the woman left the man. Wow. Marsh also remarked on the maturity of the theme. Another critic wrote that if there's a truer song about breaking up, then it's too late. The world isn't ready for it. Marsh described the melody as Timpan Alley and the arrangement of a cross between light jazz and LO studio craftsmanship. And uh, Rolling Stone remarked that King's warm, earnest singing on the song brought out the song's sadness. Uh, and the feel of the song is enhanced by the instrumental work of Danny Korchmar on guitar, Curtis Amy on sax and King on piano, of course. Uh, and there's a couple of instrumental solos. Uh, Stern remarked that uh, she wrote the lyrics in a single day after her relationship with James Taylor ended. There's quite a connection here with some of these choices. Uh, Taylor, King, Mitchell, you, you've got it. Uh, it won the record of the year at the Grammys and uh, the personnel then, Carol King on piano and vocals, Curtis Amy Soprano sax, Danny Korchmore on conga and electric guitar, Charles Charlie Larkey on bass guitar, Joel O'Brien on drums, and Ralph Schuchat on electric piano. I must admit, I love listening to this when it came over the radio. So there we are. That's number 12, It's Too Late by Carol King. It's on this uh, uh, top songs of 1971, 20 through to 11, is number 11, Your Song written by uh, uh, Elton John and songwriter Bernie Taupin. Uh, it was John's first international top 10 chart uh, single, uh, the uh, first released by Free Dog Night, however, a year early as an album track. But then uh, when John was the opening act at the time for the Free Dog Night on a tour, uh, on a tour that's when he actually uh, allowed them to record it. But they didn't release it as a single uh, and they wanted John to release it, uh, which he duly did. And uh, it appeared uh, uh, later on the self-titled second studio album. Uh, it followed Border Song, which was the first album single released at the back end of 70. But I'm including it in 71. Uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, an absolutely 
a beautiful piece of music uh, with Elton really at his best. And of course, he was at the beginning of his uh, career. Uh, Tormin, uh, Tormin re related uh, how he, he came across this song. I scribbled the lyric down on a line notepad at the kitchen table of Elton's mother's apartment at breakfast time. Uh, plain and simple. The introduced instrumental focus is very much on John's Leon Russell influenced piano work, along with the acoustic guitar uh, and uh, the band members and the string accompaniments. And the band were Elton John on piano vocals, Paul Buckmaster uh, on the arrangements, Frank Clark acoustic guitar, Gus Judgeon produced the uh, record, Colin Green on guitar, Clive Hicks on 12 string guitar, David Mormon was on drums and David and Dave Richmond, sorry, on double bass. Uh, I haven't quoted the lyric of your song, uh, but you've had quite a belly full of that. So uh, that concludes this video on the songs from 1971, top 20, 20 through to 11. Hope you enjoyed it.